Change of base formula for logs. Okay? We're not going to prove this one. We're not going to prove it. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what it is, and you're just going to memorize it. Yeah. So the, the reason this one's so important is uh, because without, without this formula, it's almost impossible to use logarithms effectively on your calculator. But with this formula, you can use logs super easily. Um, I know that some of you might have like a really nice like graphing calculator, in which case you don't need this formula. But if you just have a regular scientific calculator, um, just one of the ones that you get at Staples for 10 bucks or whatever, uh, you can use this formula to take any logarithm you want, okay? So the, the, the formula is fairly straightforward. Um, so it looks like this, so log base A of X, okay? So let's say that we've got a base of A. This is equal to log base B of X. So you can change the formula, or change the base. But if you wanna change the base, you have to divide by the original base that you wanted to, okay? So for example, suppose your calculator only has a base 10 log button, right? And if your, if your calculator has a button that looks like this, log, you can pretty much assume that it's talking about a base 10 logarithm, okay? But fear not, you can use the change of base formula to use whichever base that you want. So if we want to calculate, let's say, uh, log base two of 16. So I, I hope that we all know that's four, right? Because two to the power of four is 16. So if we want to calculate that, it's fairly straightforward to do, even though your calculator only has base 10. We can, well, let's, let's, uh, so we'll say we can use this fact. We can use this fact. So log base 2 of 16. So that's what we want to calculate. We're going to calculate it in the base 10. So we've got log base 10 of 16. And then we're going to divide that by log base 10 of 2. And look at that. So only using log base 10... You can, you can calculate something that's in base 2. So uh, I'm going to grab my calculator. and It's kind of funny. It's one of those things where if, if you're inclined to uh, punch everything into decimals, you might have a bad time here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch this into decimals, and I'll show you what we get. So I've got log base 2 or base 10 of 16. That gives me something like one point. Two zero four one one nine nine eight three etc. And log base ten of two. So log base ten of two. That's equal to zero point three zero one zero two nine nine six. And all together, uh, that's equal to. Well, if I punch this in, I get one point two zero four one one nine nine eight three divided by. 0.3010296. And I get something like 4.0000000475. Do you think that it's actually 4.0000000075? No. Why, why did the calculator give me that? Yeah, I rounded it off. These are not exact values. So this little symbol right here, this equal sign, it's not actually an equal sign. When I put a dot on top of an equal sign, it means I round it, okay? So I round it. Squiggle means approximately, which means that you could be, be a little bit off. It means that there's gonna be some error. So you can expect to have some error. 
This dot means that you've done some rounding. So uh, the way we actually type it into our calculator So in our calculator, type something that looks like this. And, and I, I kind of hate doing all this calculator talk because it, it's probably irrelevant to a lot of you because you might have a different calculator than me. So your syntax is going to be a little bit different. So you have to take what I'm saying with a grain of salt and sort of figure it out uh, for however your calculator works. But the idea of it would be to do log base uh, 10. So yeah, we'll just indicate that we're in base 10. Log base 10 of 16 divided by log base 10 of two. So however you can punch in a logarithm on your calculator, uh, do it all in one step, and then they won't do any, uh, any rounding. You should, you should get exactly four, okay? So if I were to do that, uh, so I've got log uh, of 16 divided by log of two, yeah, I get exactly four, okay? By the way, you may have also noticed that there is a button that says LN, or maybe it's lowercase L, N. That's what's called the natural logarithm. So that is the logarithm base E, and we know all about that, that value E. Euler's constant, that's right, that's right. So uh, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about logs. Uh, I, may, I may throw a little bit of homework on the website about logarithms. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do like a work period right now with, with logs. Um, what I'd really like to do is, is start jumping into uh, quadratics because that's going to be a big portion of what we do uh, over the next few weeks. So the more we can talk about quadratics face to face, I think the better. So uh, yeah, let's, let's start talking about quadratics. Um, so just to be clear, like normally uh, with this type of thing, I think it's, it, you guys know by now that I, I like to get you guys to do some work. Uh, I don't like to just tell you how things work and then ignore it. Um, but just under the, the circumstances, we're gonna just move forward. Okay, quadratic expression. That's a degree two polynomial. Are we familiar with what that means, degree two? No. Yes. Some of you yes, some of you no, okay. Okay, so a polynomial, so uh, I'll just write recall, because some of you will actually recall it, some of this, it'll actually be new information. So a polynomial is an expression with variables, uh, coefficients, and constants. Are you guys able to read that okay? Yeah. I, can, I can adjust the thickness of the pen if, if that would help, no? Okay, so a polynomial is an expression with variables, coefficients, and constants with exponents on the variables, okay? So for example, uh, something like this. Uh, so we would have like 2xy squared plus 3x squared minus 5. That's a, that's a polynomial, okay? Good question. Good question, Ethan. What is a degree 2 polynomial? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so the degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent. Oh, I should point out, sorry, I'm just going to make a little amendment here, positive exponents. Positive exponents only. No negative exponents. If you have a negative exponent, you suddenly do not have a polynomial anymore. Uh, well, there's 
uh, I mean, I guess you could call it like a, a hyperbolic function, um, but we just don't call it a, a, a polynomial. Okay, um, so you got positive exponents on the variables. Okay, so the degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent on a single term. And if you have several variables, we sum the exponents to find the degree. Okay, so I'll give you a quick example. So something like this. So x squared y cubed plus 3x squared y has degree. Well, this one has 2 plus 3 is 5. This one has, well, don't forget about that invisible 1, right? If, if you don't have an exponent, it means that there's an exponent of 1, right? Because x to the power of 1 is just equal to x. So this one would be... Uh, 2 plus 1 equals 3. So the degree on this polynomial is 5. So we've got a degree 5 polynomial. Okay. So a quadratic expression is a polynomial. I should also point out it only has one variable. We only ever talk about uh, a, a quadratic expression with a single variable. And uh, that would have a degree of 2, okay? Okay, so a quadratic expression is a degree 2 polynomial in a single variable. So this, uh, this expression here, 3x squared plus 5x minus 1, that's a quadratic expression. Okay, if I had something like this, so 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 is not a quadratic. Okay? For what it's worth, we call that a cubic because the highest exponent is 3. Means that we ha only have x, or we only have t as our variable. Uh, we only have one variable at a time. So, for example, um, so for example, this is not a quadratic. So, five x y plus two x minus one is not a quadratic. Even though it's a polynomial. With degree 2, this is still a degree 2 polynomial. It's not a quadratic because we've got several variables to worry about. And as you may have guessed, we're going to be graphing these things. Okay. My, my guess is that you've done some graphing of quadratics, uh, but probably just a little bit. Probably just a wee bit. Okay. So we will be graphing quadratic expressions. Actually, I have to correct myself. We will not be graphing quadratic expressions. We will be graphing quadratic equations of the form y is equal to so we have to set this equal to y, which is basically, you know, our up and down coordinate in the Cartesian plane. So we've got y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. So we're going to be looking at uh, the graphs of these. And uh, we'll, we'll be looking at lots of different strategies for uh, finding uh, different properties based on each one of these numbers, so a, b, and c. So how do these numbers a, b, and c affect the graph? Okay, so when we graph quadratics, we get what's called a parabola. A parabola is a type of shape, okay? So that's how we describe what the curve looks like. So parabola is a whole family of different shapes, kind of like 
uh, you know, a rectangle is a whole family of, of different shapes. Not all rectangles look the same, but they all have something in common, right? Every rectangle is made up of, of four sides, opposite sides are parallel, and where each of those sides intersect, we get a 90 degree angle. Just like with parabolas, uh, we have a lot of properties that apply to different parabolas, but most parabolas look pretty different, okay? So a parabola looks like this, and I'm gonna just start a whole new page because I, I, want, I want some room to draw. Um, so a parabola looks something like this. So we're gonna have our x, y axis, something like this. So here's my y axis going up here, my x axis is over here. And um, we'll get a, a shape that looks something like this. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start here, and um, my parabola is gonna look something like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. You don't have to be super precise when you draw yours, but I wanna make mine super precise. One, two, three, four. Like I said before, if you have any graph paper, uh, now would be a great time to use it. Um, if you don't have any graph paper, that's fine too. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So a, a parabola looks something like this. Okay, so we go just like that. Okay. So there's a few things I can say about this parabola. There's a few key points. Okay. So uh, these three points are, are quite important, okay? Uh, this point right here, we call that the vertex. So the vertex of your parabola is kind of like uh, the middle of the parabola. So uh, kind of like where the parabola starts. Um, okay, these are called the x-intercepts because they uh, intersect the x-axis. Okay, these are going to be really key points. So these three points that I've, I've pointed out are, are some of the points that we're going to spend a lot of time searching for. Uh, we also have this line right here, which kind of slices the parabola in half. Okay, and this we have a special term for. So this line, this line is called the axis of symmetry. Okay, so those are, the, those are the things that we're going to be looking at uh, over the next few classes, how to calculate those based on a specific parabola, or sorry, a specific quadratic equation, okay? So each quadratic equation, when you graph it, is going to give us a parabola, and those parabolas will have a vertex, x-intercepts, axis of symmetries, and a few other things that I didn't have time to, to mention here. Things like the stretch, like how, how wide it's stretched, the direction it's pointing. You might notice that this one's pointing down. Uh, there's also y-intercepts. So there's a lot more we can say about these, but I think this is a good intro, and I think class is going to end in, in about a minute or so. So uh, we'll leave it at that.